Hi, I'm Marty Buckley, Head of Content Marketing at Countercraft, and today I'm here with Nicole Kerrigan, our Customer Success Manager in the U.S. market. Hey, Nicole. Hi. Nice to have you here with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is part of our Meet the Crafter series, which you can check out on our YouTube channel. Um, today, I'm really excited to be here with Nicole for many reasons, one of which is that she has been named Top 100 in the United States of America for something pretty prestigious. <laughs> Nicole, can oh my goodness. I don't know if it's prestigious, but I'm a big fan of puzzle video games. And Dr. Mario World was active for a few years, and I was often in the top 100 for the U.S. leaderboard for their speed battles. I'm extremely competitive in general. <laughs> so this game was perfect because I there was a battle feature and I could take on complete strangers on the internet like everybody else likes to do with video games. <laughs> My competition has still continued, but with other active pattern games and just like everybody else in the world, in the pandemic world today, I am kind of obsessed with Wordle. <laughs> A shout out to Wordle. <laughs> Timely <laughs> news. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the, that's awesome. The story of how you ended up in cybersecurity is also a little bit unusual to say the least. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what made you choose cybersecurity as a career path? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of stumbling and a lot of great ushering from wonderful mentors. I had accepted modern dance scholarships to two great, incredible programs in the nation, but it was this wonderful mentor in high school, my computer science teacher, who really kind of focused my efforts with logic and patterns into computer science and coding. And she was insistent. She had uh, a contact at... Uh, an internship at NASA through Lockheed Martin, and she wanted me to apply. And I did just kind of on a whim. I was like, yeah, it'd be a great summer gig. Mm -hmm. And I got the job. And while I was working for NASA, I was still a modern dance major. And my leadership told me that they would keep me employed all throughout college and after if I got a real degree. <laughs> for a period of time, I tried to accomplish both. But I landed on computer science engineering, and I never regretted it since. It has been super fun. It's always problem solving, a lot of mathematics, a lot of patterns. And that's what brought me through my career today. I still do love to dance. That competitive nature has just now translated to destroying my kids at Just Dance. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> well, um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. I'm sure that you're the only person in cybersecurity today that started out in modern dance. <laughs> probably isn't a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, so you started out, and but you now have over 20 years of ex expertise in the sector. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience, where you've been where you worked. So I started off at NASA and I was providing hardware support to the Mission Control Center. And it was such a cool way to start and very stressful way to start your career because nothing could ever go down. So everything was live support and updates and you just couldn't mess up because everything was mission critical and you didn't want to mess up operations in space. And then I moved on to become uh, one of their project architects and I was in charge of implementing Java into the Mission Control Center environment for the first time, as well as setting up our first networked Dropbox and Mailbox with our Russian counterparts at the time. So that kind of got me the bug into our networking. And then I was recruited into the intelligence community, which I supported for over a decade. I started off in IT communications, then I moved into operations. It really helped me understand both sides. I got to work on defense and offense, and I understood what the challenges were for both of those industries. And that's kind of how I got ushered into cyber. So then for the last decade, I've been working uh, really with big data threat intel analysis and security product architecture. A big portion of my job was to take that network data in mass and look for patterns based on what threat actors do. I would look for commonalities in hosting providers, registration information, ASN, payment, and look for predictive ways that we could maybe categorize or establish levels of confidence for risk in machine learning algorithms. I wanted to get as predictive as we could on how we should categorize domains, hosting providers, IPs, and net blocks so that we could build a better network security product. I would work in these large volumes of data. That was one of my funnest parts. And I, I would try to identify anomalous patterns and investigate suspicious network activities so that we could identify new ways that threat actors were operating. Very cool. It sounds like you have your right and your left brain actively engaged in everything you do. <laughs> I 
do. And I also like to make up words. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we are so happy to have you here at Countercraft with that impressive resume. Um, you recently joined, as I mentioned, as our customer success manager. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what drew you to the company, how you ended up here? Well, in my previous roles, when I would work with companies that were responding to an incident of compromise, they would then pull in our network security appliance. They would always ask my input and help with a little bit of their analysis. And they would ask questions like who were targeting them? Why were they targeted? What were they going after? And maybe what would they do next? And my question, my answer to that would always be, well, you can't answer those really without deception tech. I can try to muddle some things together and give you good, good intelligence-based assumptions, but without deception tech, you truly can't answer that. And so when I got approached with this opportunity with Countercraft, I knew that they were sitting on like a wealth of actionable intel that could make, answer these questions. And if we could apply that to a broader scale, we could also look at the data in mass and potentially find new TTPs that haven't been reported and try to get ahead of the ball. And that was what was really exciting for me as this prospect presented itself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, deception is definitely a way to be way more proactive with your cybersecurity. And um, in fact, you always say that one of your mantras since you've joined the team has been deception is not just about defense. Um, so maybe you can explain a little bit what you mean about that. Yes, I, I will say Countercraft has showed me through its truly wonderful tech that it is a defense tool, um, even though I think it's much, much more. In a recent exercise, I was able to see how our product is really good at detecting everything within our deception environment. And we're also able to mimic or create digital twins of production environments to lure actors away from production assets or critical assets, which is a huge defensive tool. But it also does much more than that. Uh, it provides that intel that we are looking for that every one of my customers have always asked me, like, how are threat actors going after your infrastructure? Where are your vulnerabilities? What should you fortify? Which systems, which applications, which networks? How can you better protect those assets? And that customized threat intelligence allows those security teams to focus on what's most important first and really protect what's most critical to our customers. Also, Deception is an exciting growing sector. I mean, it's really just taking off and it's kind of one of the reasons why I want to jump onto an opportunity with a company who has great tech and is in a really growth sector of this industry. Yeah, well, that we are. And we're really excited to have you as part of our team. Um, also, yeah, I think currently we have over a dozen job openings, some of them under you, some of them in other um, parts of the company. So everybody be sure to also check out our careers um, page, which has all our job openings. And um, yeah, we're looking for people. <laughs> that would be great. If you know any good, talented engineers or Intel analysts, you want to jump into a new fun sector, uh, please reach out. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us a little bit and tell us more about your past and your present. And uh, we'll be seeing more of each other in the future. Yes. Thanks, Marty. Okay. Bye. Bye.